So hello, this is a video on plotting in Julia and we're going about some very basic but powerful plots in, in the Julia programming language. And uh, I'll show you how to kind of like import the, the correct package and make a couple of very standard 2D plots that I like to use, as well as some 3D plots which are very simple to declare but very powerful when you, when you look at them. So first thing we need to do is to install the correct package here. And uh, how this works in Julia is by, by running basically the uh, using, uh, using package um, function here and then import this, uh, this uh, package called plots, right? I've done this before. Um, this takes quite a while in this case. I'm just kind of commented this out because I've done this before. But this is what you would run and wait a few minutes for this to, to install. And then I have to tell, uh, in my runtime, uh, I have to tell Julia to actually use this package called plots. So that's what I'm doing here. It takes a few seconds and then I'm ready to use the, the functions that come with it. Now let's start with some 2D plots. What I want to plot first is on a defined uh, range of, of axes here going from negative 10 to 10, I define uh, two responses, which are one is a, a quadratic um, uh, function of x and the other one is a cubic function of x. And so with this data defined, I can start making some plots. So the very first very basic plot would be plotting um, y versus x, right? So my response y, um, in this case, the quadratic data versus the input x. The first time I call this plot method um, in a new started kernel, this takes uh, just a few seconds longer. The next plots will just be very fast. But here we go. We have exactly what we expect, right? This is a quadratic function um, going from negative 10 to 10. Now let's say I would like to overlay my cubic data. And so what I do there is I call plot again and I use this exclamation mark, which we have seen previously. Whenever I do call an exclamation mark in, in Julia, it means uh, modify the existing object that is underlying. And that's exactly what we're doing by adding a, a second line to this plot. And now we see we had our previously our quadratic function here, and now this uh, much um, yeah, faster uh, growing and declining cubic function is, is taking most of the range here right now. Note that it also uh, gives you an uh, automatic uh, label here, uh, but you can also define those. And this is what we're going to do in this next cell here. So we're going to do a little bit more um, formatting of the plot and giving it titles and labels. So I'll do the same thing again. I plot x versus uh, or x and y1. I give this a label, I just call this, this is my quadratic uh, function. Uh, the LW keyword means line width. So the default is one, I set it to two, just to have a little bit stronger line. And then I add my second line to it. And I also add my separate label, x to the, to the third. Um, and then I can, with some basic functions, title, x label, y label, all with the exclamation mark, I label my my title plot and my, my axes. So if I run this, I have this neat looking plot here. I have my labeled legend uh, and I have my axes labeled and I have this very uh, neat title here. Let's say I don't want a line plot, but I would like to have my, my points directly pointed, not connected by, by lines. In that case, I do exactly the same thing, but instead of calling plot, I'll call scatter, and that makes me scatter plot. Everything else is the same. What I did here though is I also uh, used x limbs and y limbs, which means uh, limiting the, the range of the plots. So I, instead of plotting from negative 10 to 10, I'm only plotting here from about yeah, negative three to three, and that is just to see a little bit better you know, what, my, uh, what my markers look like and that we're actually not having connected lines in between those. Another very basic and, and very useful plot that I always use is a histogram. And here, this is 
what I'm doing basically on the responses so you kind of can imagine what that what that looks like but let's say I would like to compare the distributions of my quadratic and my cubic response here and I do exactly that I use the labels and what I also apply here is this alpha keyboard uh, a keyword which means uh, basically how opaque or transparent I want my my bars in the histogram to be so I set it um, to a fraction of one. If I set it to one, they're completely opaque. And if I put it to some low fraction, then they will be transparent and I can, I can look at them basically in an overlay. So let's do that. And what we're seeing here coming up are exactly that. So, so transparent bars, so we can kind of look at these histograms uh, more or less on top of each other. And what we see is ex exactly what we expect, right? So we have, well, uh, strong distributions around zero for the quadratic plot there's no negative values and the higher we go in in value um, the lower our uh, actual uh, yeah uh, population is of those bins let's move on to some 3d plots and here is for example a surface plot so let's assume on a defined range going from negative 2 to 2 we're looking at a function, and here I, I defined a, uh, yeah, a somewhat of a Gaussian function here, so a negative x and y to the squared. And uh, I want to plot that as a surface uh, plot, so I call just the function surface. And to really make it uh, look very neat, I also define a color gradient. When I define that with the function cgrad, I can just type in from which color to to, uh, to what color I want to to use this gradient. So I like it going from violet to blue, and that's then exactly what I what I do here. So I add this in. I do my normal labeling, and then I run this function. And what it plots me is exactly that. I get a three D plot x and y and this is my f of x going in the the vertical direction and i also have a color map that um, corresponds to the magnitude of of my function another type of 3d plot that is quite interesting is what i call a trajectory plot where uh, we basically are looking at coordinates of two points in, in a 3d space so for that we have a uh, the function called plot 3d and i give my uh, my areas x and y uh, as, as inputs and they are both parameterized by something that you could kind of think of as like a like a time uh, dependence right so I, I have this range of t and I go um, here in t from 0 to 8 pi so four rotations uh, of, of trigonometric uh, functions and I go in steps of pi over 100 and then I feed that element-wise into the cosine and sine function. And if I plot that um, and also yeah, give it some color and switch off the legend, do my labeling, then I get exactly that. I get this nice spiral plot here, uh, basically a point in 3D space and, and how it uh, evolves over time. So this was my overview of functions in Julia. I hope you liked it and you had a good learning experience. And if so, I hope to see you in one of the next videos. Thank you.